Hey, good morning. Felt led to do a, a quick message. It's not quick. It's probably going to be a lot of scripture and ranting on my behalf, but um, pay attention to what the Word of God says, not what the person adds to it. If it's something that's helpful, then hallelujah, praise Yah. So <clears throat> hope everybody's having a great morning. Um, everybody's dealing with different things, right? So there's going to be people who are dealing with hardships right now. You know, pray for them, help them. Um, you're going to be people who are excited because they got some good news about something. Rejoice with them. And um, you'll see that in <clears throat> the book of Romans, chapter 12. Rejoice with those who rejoice and, you know, weep with those who mourn sort of thing. So um, I put a title on here, you know, tongue in cheek. But I think it's important, especially right now, election integrity. Okay. What does it mean? <laughs> I guess I'm learning right now as I'm speaking, but. Election integrity to a lot of people in America right now, um, it means that you want to make sure that the votes are counted properly in an integrous way so that we make sure whoever you voted for, that that vote counts. And uh, when we have integrous elections, then the will of the people is that the person that they've selected or elected uh, will be that person. So a lot of people are up in arms about um, the American election right now. I understand it. I get bombarded with um uh, pamphlets in the mail all day, you know, every day, two, three a day. Um, and, uh, um, with social media, right? Ad after ad after ad. If you happen to turn on a television, you know, to just whatever, put a, a YouTube video on, even if you're watching one that has like healing music or something like that, um, it'll inter interrupt with ads about the election. So it's top of mind for everybody. Cause that's what you know, they, they want us to be thinking about and um, arguing about. Um, so election integrity, from that perspective, I'm going to share with you some verses in the scriptures that I think will help you if you're a believer and you're confused about what's going on, um, that you'll realize that the election integrity that they're trying to promote, it doesn't matter. What matters is the, the election, the people of Yah, and their integrity. Okay, so election integrity. So my hope is that the people of, of God who are, you know, understand who you are in Messiah, right, in Christ, as a, a follower of the way, the truth, and the life, those who uh, have a new heart, they love his law, but they're in the diaspora, if you will, we'll call it the, the, the land, outside the land, and you're trying to do the best you can to make the best decisions that are right and in the will of God, okay? Um, so let's dive in. I'm going to go through some scriptures. My hope and prayer is that it connects the way I believe it was connecting this morning for me as I was reading it and that it will bring light to the situation either that you're in, um, or maybe you can help others who are in darkness, who have fear and all these other things that are going on in their lives. Okay. Um, Romans 13, before I start people who, who, um, are very indoctrinated into political theater theater they are going to um say romans 13 is not doesn't really mean what that says okay or it was added by the catholics so that they could control the people okay um i believe it's part of the the book of romans 13th chapter and i think it, it means what it says but it can be confusing just like some scriptures if you don't reconcile the discrepancies that are apparent um then you will miss be misled which you'll see all throughout uh, denominational teachings, right? They'll take tongues, they'll take um, communion, they'll take um, um, what there's like the rapture, stuff like that. They'll take three or four verses, slice them up and say, that's what this means. So everyone's guilty of that. I've probably done it too. So yeah, forgive me. Romans 13, let every person submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And those that exist are put in place by God. Okay, so let's say, oh, that's just the church authority or that's the, the government. Either way, either way, whatever way you want to see it, God's established this authority, okay? So whoever opposes the authority has resisted God's direction. And those who have resisted will bring judgment upon themselves. For leaders cause no fear 
for good behavior, but for bad. Now, if you do not want to fear the authority, do what is good, and you will get his approval, for he is God's servant to you for your good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not carry the sword for no reason, for, the, for he is God's servant, an avenger who afflicts punishment on the evildoer. Therefore, it is necessary to be in submission, not because of punishment, but also because of conscience. For this reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, attending diligently to this very thing. Pay to everyone what is due to them, tribute to those who tribute is due, tax to whom tax is due, respect to whom respect is due, and honor to whom honor is due. Um, that was one through seven, okay? Let me stop there for a second. These verses in my flesh make me, like, angry a little bit. Why? It might do that for you, too. Why would it make me angry that he's saying, submit to an evil uh, servant governor? Because I don't want to submit to an evil governor. Now, there's people who will say, do everything that that governor says, no matter what, because that's exactly what um, God put him in charge for. That's not the interpretation, okay? And Scripture proves that. Um, but before we move on, a lot of people would say, hey, there's people who are obedient people, right? Obedient to God, and the government still um, came in and demanded that they uh, spit on their Bible, and if they didn't, they'd be, they'd be shot and killed. And that's happened, right? There's times where people have been put to the test by the wicked government, shot and killed, right? And you're like, so should they have obeyed them by spitting on the Bible? Of course not. But you understand the people that died, that got shot that way, there's a, there's a provision for them in the scriptures about the, the martyrdom, right? The people that have uh, had their blood shed for the sake of the good news. Okay, so now fast forward to today's date. The people that believe they're being persecuted, you know, in the, in the church today because of the administrations in charge of the governments, right? It's because they want their idolatry still. They want their freedom. It's not because they worship the God of creation and obey his laws, right? It's not because of that. It's because they, they, don't, they want to be free. Their freedom is the American dream, uh, materialism, idolatry, all these stuff, right? And you'd say, well, they're murdering babies, right? The other side is pro-death. Okay, but the other side's pro-immorality in terms of covetousness and materiality and greed, which is worse. The scriptures say both are equally bad. So just because you're anti-abortion, like some of the Republican, uh, you know, social media people, right? Um, they'll say, oh, end abortion in America. But what about greed and idolatry and covetousness and bearing false witness? Do we put an end to that? See, so when the government, is, as Yah puts these people in charge, to punish us because of our disobedience, what is our responsibility? Is it to rise up against the government, you know, and, and, and save America? Let's find out. Romans, uh, Daniel chapter 2. Okay. I won't read the whole thing, but if you read Daniel chapter 2, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, is having this dream, and he's enraged. He doesn't know what it's about. And he says to the magis, the people who are, um, the 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 people who do the um, interpretation of dreams and magic and all that stuff. And Daniel's part of that group, right? Because Daniel's, you know, Daniel's a righteous man, but he's 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 got in favor of the king. Um, nobody can interpret it. He's like, look, everyone's going to die if you don't tell me what it is. Like, it's serious, right? So in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel is informed of this, and he goes to the house of his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they would request God to God in prayer for mercy, okay? They're praying to the king of all kings, right? They're praying to, to Yah um, so that this mystery be revealed so they'd be spared. So one, number one, if you're concerned about the election, all this other stuff, as the elect, the, the integrist of Yah, we're seeking his will, his authority, his change of direction, right? Because it says that the heart of the kings are in the hands of Yah. And he directs them wherever he desires to go. The book of Daniel shows this very clearly throughout the whole thing. In chapter 2, verse 19 of Daniel, During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Yah answered the prayer. Why? Because they were righteous. Daniel blessed the God of heaven and answered, saying, Blessed is the name of God 
of Elohim forever and ever, for his wis for wisdom and might are his. Right? He changes times and seasons. He does. He removes kings and installs kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and acknowledge to the discernment, to the discerning. He reveals the deep and hidden things. He knows the li what lies in the darkness, and light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give you praise. For you gave me wisdom and power, and you have made known to me what we have asked of you. You have revealed to us the word of the king. Okay, so seek God, right? Seek his instructions. Seek what he wants. Instead of being influenced by social media influencers who are all working for the enemy. All of them. Sorry. They're all working for the enemy. To get you, the sons of light, son, daughters of light, not of darkness, to stay in the darkness. And you think it's the light because they're promoting things that prick your emotions, right? Appeal to your, your covetousness and idolatry. And people don't want to hear that message. They don't want to hear it because then you'd be confronted with it and then you'd have to change. I get it. Most people aren't going to want to hear a message like this. I don't want to give a message like this. I don't want to hear a message like this. But whose will are we seeking? Okay. Who is it? Our will or his will? Now, back to the New Testament. Some people are like, oh, that's Daniel. Maybe it's not even scripture. I don't know. People are even denying that the Bible is scripture anymore. Like the whole thing is like made up. That's that's willful ignorance in my view. There's plenty of evidence that, that demonstrates the legitimacy of the authenticity of the writings of scripture. Okay. Go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, so again, read the whole epistle of Peter, <clears throat> but this specific portion um, deals with the, what the believers, who those who are the living stones of Yah, who have been born again to a new hope, right? And who are to throw off things like wickedness, malice, out malice, all this stuff, right? And staying away from fleshly cravings and things like that. But now hear this in 1 Peter 2, 13. For the Lord's sake, submit yourselves to every human authority, whether to a king or as, a, as supreme or to the governor sent by him for punishment of those who do evil in the praise of those who do good. For this is God's will, that you silence the ignorance of foolish men by doing good. What's doing good? What's doing good? What's doing evil? Doing good is obeying the commandments of God. That shows that you love him. Okay? And they're not, they're not grievous. They're not hard. They're not burdensome. Okay? They're, they're a delight. And, when, and God's law is in your heart. It's a delight because it's the truth. And it gives you discernment of what's what's good and evil. And you know because God has given you that. He's like like Daniel said, God has given you discernment and wisdom in your heart. The Proverbs prove it. The whole scriptures prove this. It says this, live as free people, but not using freedom as a cover up for evil. You know, the American dream, right? The 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 freedom that we have. The the whole thing about the song, like I'm proud to be an American, give me a break. Like pride. It leads to destruction. If you're proud, boast about Yah, okay? Boast about you know the creator of heaven and earth. You know his son, Messiah, you should, Jesus, okay? You know him. That's something to boast about, you know? It's not because you did something special that you earned your salvation. He chose you. Why did he choose you? Why did he choose me? I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, give thanks, okay? And then, and then do what he says. If he's like, hey, I put these wicked governors in place, it's, it's because the people, my people called by my name, have, have uh, thrown my instructions behind their back. They've disregarded everything that I've told you. And it says in Hosea 4, right? 6, my people perish with lack of knowledge. Because it says, and you, when you finish that, those verses, right? That verse, it says, you, you've disregarded my law. You've disregarded it. So therefore, I'll disregard your children. So why are we suffering with evil? Why do we, everyone's blaming pharmaceuticals and, and um, the FDA. And I get, I do that too. But it's like, sin is the problem. If we were a people who were righteous and upright with Yah, then we would have peace. We would have right ruling. We would have people who are in charge of things that are going to do things that are helpful to our group or society. But the reality is the prophecies that are being fulfilled in Scripture are because God's people are wicked, that they won't do what he says. So what does he do? He sends them plagues. He sends them famines. He sends them things that will create a catastrophe or calamity that will cause his people in tribulation to turn back and cry out to him and seek him and his will to do what he wants. 
that's the repentance that he's looking for. And so um, we're supposed to be integrous as elected, elected by Yah. Now, before I get there, it says, live as free people, not using your freedom as a cover up for you. Rather, live as God's slaves, right? We're the, we're the chosen, we're the elect, right? We're happy. No, we're slaves of Yah, right? We do his will, not ours. The Messiah is the greatest example of governing authorities. He's the best example. Governing authorities telling him, hey, if you just do this, you'll be free. He says, you have no power older than what my Father in heaven has given you, right? Are you a king? Yeah, my kingdom is out of this world. So we already know the answer. We know what he says, right? Act the way as if we're submitted to God, the way the Messiah was submitted to the Father. We have a, a long way to go on that. Honor all people, right? Oh, I just believe, I just hang out with believers, really? Do you, do you not give honor to people? Maybe they'll, they'll see something different about you and Yah will use your testimony, your good works, so that they will see them and praise God in heaven. Um, that's evangelism more than preaching, preaching, preaching. You know, anyone can preach. Everyone's on street court preaching, preaching. Are they reaching anybody? Only possible if God makes it, if Yah makes it possible. Love the brotherhood. Okay, so love your brothers and sisters. Fear God, honor the king. So, if Trump gets in, or Kamala gets in, we're supposed to honor the king, or in this thing, the queen, or I guess she could become a man, right? Like, the insanity of what times we live in should be the wake-up call for the people who, the people of the book, you know, who claim to know him, that we need to get our act together, because regardless of which one of those people is put in place, God's doing it, and guess what? It's not going to be pretty. People are going to perish because they reject the true king and now they have their savior, right? It's a fine line. Now let's go to um, 1 Samuel 8. Okay. Okay, 1 Samuel 8. Yeah, and you have to understand context here too, um, but I'll read it. Now, when Samuel grew, grew old, he appointed his sons as judges over Israel. Okay, so there weren't kings, there were judges. There were, there were people put in authority by Yah, the way he designed it, his priests, right? And they weren't always good, right? And even Eli early, you know, you see his sons, you know, did detestable things, right? And um, Eli paid for that because he didn't correct his sons. Samuel had similar issues, but Samuel... Um, was a he was an anointed prophet of Yah. Okay, um, so in chapter eight, you're going to see um, what happens here, and I think we're in a similar situation uh, spiritually. It says, "Now when Samuel grew, grew old, he appointed his sons as judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Yoel, Joel, and the name of the second Abiah. Um, they were judges in Beersheba, but his sons, however, did not walk in his ways, but turned aside." For after dishonest gain, they took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you have grown old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the matter was displeasing in Samuel's eyes, and they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to Yahuwah. Samuel prayed to him. Then Yah said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all they say to you. For they have not rejected you, rather they have rejected me from being king over them. Like all the deeds that they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and worshiping other gods, so they are doing to you also. So now listen to their voice. However, you must earnestly forewarn them and declare to them the rulings of the king will reign over them. Now Samuel reported all the words of Yahuwah to the people who are asking him for a king. This will be the practice of the king that will reign over you, he said. He will draft your sons and assign them as char charioteers and horsemen. They will run before his chariots. He will appoint them as commanders of thousands of captains of fifties. Also, some of them plow fields, reap the harvest, make weapons for war and equipment for his chariots. He will also take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will seize all the best of your fields, vineyards, and olive groves and give them to you, his courtiers. Uh, he will take a tenth of your grain, 
of your vintage and give it to the officials and slaves. You also take your male servants, female servants, your best young men and your donkeys and make them do his work. He will take a tenth of your flocks. Then you yourselves will become his slaves. When the day comes, you will cry out because of your king, whom you, whom you have chosen for yourselves. Yahuwah will not answer you on that day. Okay, so he warned them, give you a chance. Okay, but the people refused to listen to Samuel and they said, no, but a king should be over us so that we, so that we may become like all the nations um, having our king who judges us go out before and fight our battles. Sound familiar, right? I, I know the, the, the political right. I know them, you know, I know them. They're very, very staunch in terms of we want it's right. They can't take away our rights. We need to have guns. We need to have um, boys' bathrooms be separated, right? All right stuff, right? We, we shouldn't be dealing with that stuff. But there's a bigger spiritual battle going on here, right? So instead of crying out to Yahuwah, our, our king, Yahushua, the Messiah, the come Yahushua, come, come Yeshua, right? We're going, oh, we'll, have a, we'll appoint this guy. He's going to do our battles for us. But we'll submit to him as a slave. So people are going to even know this, just like they did in Samuel's day. God's telling you, okay, I'll give you a king. You're going to submit to him. You're going to be a slave. And the people are okay with it. They're just like, yeah. I mean, he's going to fight for us. After the, he, Samuel heard the words of the people, he reported them back to the hearing of Yahuwah. Yahuwah said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the appointed the king of the, and the, to reign for them. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, go each one to his own town. So you got Saul. How did that work out? Not well, right? Even David, he made some decisions that weren't so good. Um, we're going to have earthly kings, okay? But the part, the heart of the people, right? The heart of the people is what Yah is after. And when he sees that the people, even though you're supposed to pray for your leaders, right? You're supposed to multiply in the land that you are. But how are you going to behave when you don't get the right leader? The one that you want, right? Everyone's going to freak out and fall into despair and all that stuff. Um it's, it's unbelievable to me. Okay, so back to First uh, Peter 2. I just want to read these couple words and then go off to a couple things that I think, in my view, it's just me, are pretty, pretty awesome. Okay. Okay, for the Lord's sake, submit yourselves to every human authority, whether to the king or supreme or to governor sent by him for punishment to those who do evil and praise to those who do good. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish men by doing good. What's God's will? Okay, God's will. Because I think everybody should be praying for God's will. I think that. Why? Um, Matthew chapter 6. Our Messiah prayed. Told us how to pray. Our Father in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Your will be done. God's will be done. The Father's will be done. Okay, so that's his prayer. So I'm going to pay attention more spe specifically to uh, the Messiah's prayer. Uh, yes. Is it Thessalonians? Yeah, I think it's First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. Okay, First, First Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, verse 1. Finally then, brothers and sisters, we ask you to appeal to the Lord Yusha, Yeshua, just as you received from us the way you ought to walk and please God. As in fact you are walking, yet you keep progressing more and more. Your faith is progressive. You're progressing your faith. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Yahushua, Jesus, or Yeshua. Uh, for this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Your sanctification. What sanctification? Fancy word for being set apart. What set apart? Being holy. Holy unto Yah. Like set apart for Him. Right? In the fire. Right? The, sancti the sanctification fires that Messiah gives us because He needs to burn off the useless shoots in our faith. He needs to cut it off. And we need to allow Him to do that. And we have a choice. We can either allow this and submit to Him and let Him change our walk, change us, which is God's will. 
you know, it's, he, Messiah said, it's not going to be an easy road that leads to life. It's going to be hard. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. They hated me, they'll hate you. If they put me to death, they might put you to death too. That's the that's the that's where the rubber meets the road for the believer. It's your sanctification. So what is the sanctification that, that Paul is speaking out about in 1 Thessalonians 4? Abstain from sexual immorality. Okay, sexual immorality. So rampant, right? So easy to, to become sexually immoral in this world. Phones, right? Are you guarding your eyes? Are you, What are you listening to? Because those are the things that are the windows to the soul, so to speak. And that's what your heart will start to do. The wickedness of your heart. If you fill it with God's word, his spirit, you'll be doing righteousness. And people will think you're crazy and they'll hate you. They'll hate you. Not because of you, but because the the um, the righteousness within you. The light that's within you. That's the Messiah said. All right? Shine your light before men, right? You're going to draw people to the light because Yah's power in you, his grace, his spirit, right? And you're going to repel wickedness and they're going to grind their teeth at you and want to kill you. It says your sanctification, abstain from sexual morality. So put, put guards in place that, that keep you from doing things that are detestable to, to God. Um, to know each of you how to gain control of his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of the lust, like the pagans, like the nations who do not know God. And you know if you're in, in this situation, you know it. I know it. And you know what? The, the reason we know it, our conscience right? The spirit within us, it's like correcting us. You feel dirty and filthy and you should. And if that disgusting feeling leads you to uh, repentance and forsaking those things and started to, to walk in his ways, then praise God. He's merciful. His mercy is new every morning, every morning, not every night, every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Do not overstep a brother, take advantage of him in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all these things. As we have told you and soundly warned you, for God did not call us to impurity, but it, but to holiness. Consequently, the one who rejects this is not rejecting man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now, who does he give his Holy Spirit to? Those who obey him. You know, Acts 5.32, he says that. Um, and First John, I think, too, also says that. Um, now, concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write you, for you yourselves are taught by God, his Holy Spirit to love one another. In fact, you even practice it towards all your brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. He's talking specifically to this group. But we urge you, brethren, to keep progressing more and more and aspire to lead a quiet life, mind your own affairs, and work with your hands just as we directed you so that we may behave properly towards outsiders and not have a need for of anything. It's amazing, right? If you read all these verses um, in total, and you start seeing the connection, right? It says, hey, you're supposed to love people, right? And you go back to Romans 13, where I was just talking about the government um, being wicked, but it's because Yah has appointed them. Back to verse 8 of Romans 13. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. So Paul's being consistent in his teaching here. For the one who loves one another fulfills the Torah. What did Messiah say is fulfilling the law and the prophets? Treat other people the way you want to be treated, right? Respect. If, if, I, if I've... Um, corrected somebody because I love them, not because I'm just trying to be smarter than them, right? That people do that. But if I'm like, hey, I, I love you. You're in sin, brother. Like you need to repent, right? That's the time. That's the way I would want to be treated. Okay. So people are like, oh, you're, you're not loving your neighbor yourself. Yes. And even these people who are politi political people, right? In the, on the, they'll say the left side, especially um, love is love, right? And they have rainbow flags, which is an abomination um, to call it pride because the rainbow flag is the covenant of, y of Yah to his people that he won't destroy us by flood again, right? It's it's God's God's rainbow. And people are mad about that, right? The same people are mad about the rainbow being um, defiled. Don't give, don't care about the Ten Commandments, right? All they care about is the, the abortion one, right? Not about idolatry and covetousness and materialism. They care about the, you know, oh, God's rainbow, right? He's not going to flood the earth again. Okay, Um but the love is love thing, right? It says, love your, look at this. They're using God's, they're using God's holy word. Love your neighbor as yourself means all, all people, right? Regardless of their lifestyle, love them. But is love your neighbor as yourself, meaning to accept wickedness into the camp so it could spread through the camp and destroy everything that God's trying to help build up within the community? No, it doesn't mean that. In fact, Leviticus 19, where love your neighbors yourself is the quote, 
it says to rebuke your neighbor frankly so that they don't suffer sin and do it without holding a grudge. So yes, Romans 13, don't owe anybody anything except for uh, loving one another and you fulfill the Torah when you do this. Messiah says in, in Matthew seven twelve, right? He says, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, um, he doesn't say it there. He says in Matthew 7, this is the, the, the fullness of the Torah, right? This is fulfilling the Torah, right? The golden rule, if you will. Um, love, love each other, right? Love, love one another. Let me read it. I'm sorry. I know I should memorize it. It says, uh, verse 12, So in all things, do to others what you'd want to do unto them. For this is the, the law and the prophets. That is the law and the prophets. Okay. Um, okay, Romans 13, 8. I just read that. Now, verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not, do, not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment, any other one, right? He's not saying it's, it's just not adultery. It's just not murder. It's not coveting. Any other commandment is summed up by this word. You shall love your neighbors yourself. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fullness of Torah. Exactly what the Messiah said in Matthew, Matthew 7. Um, Besides all this, you know the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep. You think the enemy doesn't understand scripture or know the scriptures? Of course he does. So the enemy is using people who proclaim to be uh, righteous people, right? Pastors and, and people in the pulpits, right? He's using them to deceive God's people. I know it's a, it's, it's sort of, people get mad. They're like, that's my pastor. Don't talk about my pastor. I'm like, look, you have to test what your pastor says. I don't care if he started good. He might not be on the right track right now. He might be misleading you into falsehoods. Okay. So don't follow man. You follow Yah, right? Don't follow me. Don't follow any pastor or proclaim people who claim to know the the word of God. Follow him. Follow the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he says. It's time for you to wake up from your sleep. So what does the enemy do, do? Oh, we're woke. We're awakened, the great awakening, stuff like that. But the truth is, you are supposed to wake up from your sleep. It says, for now, your salvation is nearer than when you first came to believe. So if you were just saved when you said the prayer, why, why, do we have, why are we warned in, in the letters? Why are we warned throughout all the scripture to not fall asleep, right? To make sure you're filling your vessel with oil, right? The things that are going to help, help you shine the light, the Holy Spirit. The night is almost gone. The day is near. So let us put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We are children of the day, not of the night, you guys. We walk by day, not by, not by night. Let us walk properly in the day. What is the light? The light is or in Hebrew. Or, Tor, Torah, Torah, the light of God, right? Messiah says, I'm the light of the world. He's saying he's the Torah. He's the way, the truth, and life. You walk in his ways, okay? You, we don't walk in the ways of the devil. And it's very hard to discern what's righteous and not righteous in these days because we're deceived by the mass media, the, the, the X media, the, the Instagram reels, all that stuff. And when you don't spend any time in the word and you don't spend time in intimate prayer with God, you can be and most likely will be deceived. Okay. I'm not immune to this either. Okay. I got to get my act together as well. So before you think I'm standing here, sitting here as some know-it-all guy who's trying to provoke you to be, um, you know, following something that, that, you know, I do perfectly, that's false. I don't. I want to. And that's the heart of people that Yah is looking for. He wants us to desire his ways. Um, and there's people right now who are like, I don't even desire his ways. Okay, you become lukewarm, right? You have, many people have, but it's not the end, okay? You're still breathing. You still have breath in your lungs. You know, plead for God to change your heart. Okay, many examples where people come to Yahushua, the Messiah, and they're like, please heal me. And he's like, get away from me, right? And they're like, but you, you can. He's like, okay. This is faith, right? The woman with the sick daughter told her, you know, the dogs don't get, you know, the meat, the bread on the master's table. She said, yeah, but the dogs get the crumbs. And he's like, that great faith saved you. So don't stop asking. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop um, knocking. You know, he wants that. He wants you to hunger and thirst for him. So get up. You know, the righteous fall seven times, but guess what? They get up seven times or eight, as somebody's told me recently. Don't stop getting up, okay? This is the encouragement for you. I know it's a hard message. I know it's heavy. I know it's accusatory in some ways. But if there's no conviction, there's no change. If there's no change, right? There's no there's no salvation. I'm saying 
he says, put on your armor of light. Let us walk properly in the, as in the day, not carousing in drunkenness, not sexual promiscuity or sensuality, not in strife or envy. Right? So if your, your sexual promiscuity is good, but you still have envy and, and, and covetousness, he's like, all those things got to go. Instead, put on the Lord Messiah Yeshua and stop making provisions for the flesh for its cravings. Romans 13 is a gorgeous chapter. I think it is. It's like he's telling us like what's going to happen. Right? He's telling us the things that are going to happen in terms of governing authorities. And he's like, if these people are so wicked, they should be getting us into right line with the creator, not with their agendas. Okay. Not with their agendas. The whole world is, is nuts right now. In other countries, they've got all sorts of things going on. But America, in my view, as an American, we're one of the worst, if not the worst, right? We're the most gluttonous, prideful, um, self-entitled nation I've ever seen, right? And I don't, I, I love Americans. I'm an American. Um, they, they want you to believe that Russia is your, your enemy, uh, Iran is your enemy, Israel is your enemy, um, Saudi Arabia is your enemy. They want me to believe like those people, there's people in all of those nations who are just like you and me, who have an acknowledgement of, we live in a, we're living in a disgusting, you know, land, okay, oppressive, right? You think Chinese people, all for 1.3 billion or 1.4 billion Chinese people are not crying out in some way? Maybe they've got their statues and their Buddhas and you're like, ah, they're, they're praying to a false guy. We need to send missionaries. Well, what if the missionaries go over there and they teach them similar idolatry, right? Who am I to say? But in America, we have our own idols, right? It's politicians. It's uh, our job titles. It's our family, our, our congregations that we go to. It's, you know, I can't leave my congregation because, you know, like... I don't know, like I've left them and I'm not boasting about leaving them. I'm saying I got to do what God tells me to do. I, I really have to listen to him. And why is that? Now here's the, the main message. Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, this is Yeshua, Lord, Lord will enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven, the will of God. What is the will of God? Your sanctification. What is the will of God? obedience to his ways, the most high, his ways. That's his will. Okay. How do I know? Many of many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and drive out many demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name? His authority? Because they did these miracles, right? Then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. So I'm learning so much through this even now there's going to be people who will be able to cast out demons in his name and it will be legit. But those people who were doing these things, they did them in vain. They did it in their own, their own, their own. They took pride in these things because they're even saying we did, we did, we did. He's like, you didn't do anything. They're not giving honor to him, but he says lawlessness. That is a void of God's law. If we are making disciples today, if we're making disciples, right? Um, they're students. I'm, I'm going to help someone become a disciple. What? What did you disciple them into? The faith? It can't be lawless because he says, like, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that I've said. That was the final commission. And he's saying there's going to be people who did these things in his name, spoke in tongues, healed people. And he said, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness, anomia, void of the law, either by ignorance or willfully. Either way, it should pre we should be preaching obedience to the law of God. That's the will of God. They, it says, those who do the will of my Father in heaven. And so that's going to enter into the kingdom of God. So which kingdom are we seeking? Which kingdom? Which kingdom? Good question. Also, the Messiah says, everyone says, I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend, right? You love that song? Okay. Matthew 12. Listen to this. The will of God, right? Verse 46, Matthew 12. While Yeshua was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside trying to speak to him. Someone said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside trying to speak to you. They're trying to correct the Messiah. But to the one telling him this, Yeshua responded, who is my mother and who is my brothers? Stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. 
For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, he is my mother and sister and mother. So his disciples weren't just the 12. There were other disciples of, of, of Yahushua. There are other disciples of him. And he's saying, that's my mother, my brothers, and my sisters. Those who do the will of my Father. Okay. And let's see. James. Yaakov, Jacob, James. Everyone's uh, like, got to say the right Hebrew name these days, right? Okay. James 4. <clears throat> this should, this, this chapter, this book really grabbed my heart years ago. But the more I read it, the more I understand, dang, like, God's not playing, right? God is not playing around. It says this. Now listen to this. This is my take. Okay, so just put your listening ears on and, and discern with, with what I'm saying of course, with what the word says, but listen to the words. James chapter four. Where do quarrels and conflicts come uh, among you come from? Fighting, fighting amongst each other. Don't they come from this, your passions and battle within your body parts? You crave and you have not. You murder and you envy, yet you cannot get it. You fight and you wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. Some versions say pray, but you do not ask. You don't have because you don't ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask with impure motives so that you may spend it on your passions. Sound like the, the political environment we're in? Doesn't it? Everyone's like, oh, we got to get this guy in the office. We got to get this girl in the office. Oh my goodness, you know, if they don't get in, our country's ruined. Okay. If your country is America, if your destination is America, sorry, my phone keeps falling down. Um, then yeah, you are going to be in despair. You're going to be freaked out and you're going to feel lost and hopeless. But listen to what James says. This is that those Bible studies that people end up going, and eh, going back to that. Listen to what James says. You adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enemy, enmity with God? Like friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that in vain, the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit which he has made to dwell in us, but he gives greater grace Therefore, God opposes the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And grace is not a license to sin. It's the power of God to walk in his ways. It's a conviction on your heart. Therefore, submit to God. Submit, not commit. I'm going to be a better Christian. I'm going to start going to church. Submit to God. We are the church. It's not a building. You don't have to go to church to be saved. In fact, most people I've talked to who are legitimately born again weren't in a church when they got saved. Okay. That's where you go get discipled and learn. But if they're teaching you wrong things, you don't continue to get discipled in error. You want to be discipled by the Holy Spirit. That's right. It says, but resist the devil and he will flee from you. The problem with people not resisting the devil is they sort of like what the devil's offering them. I'm afraid to say this, but most people love sin. They love it. It's because it's it. Uh, in the in the people who are preaching most of the stuff today... They're appealing to your emotions, which is your flesh. And you have to discern spirit, flesh, the difference. Even the Messiah said this. when Before he was being executed, he said, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. And we think we got this figured out. No. It says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. How do you draw near to God? It says, hide your word in my heart. Right? I treasure your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. What is sin? It's breaking God's law, 1 John 3, 4. So if you don't want to be in sin, you want his law to be in your heart because then if the law is in your heart, those are the very things that you will do. But you can't just do them on your own works. You have to do them by the spirit that he puts in you. If he doesn't put the spirit in you, then those dead works are in vain. You need his Holy Spirit. That's why it says he gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey. There's a process. It's a process, right? Do we fear God or do we fear man? Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. And again, the, this is direct. Most people, including my flesh, myself, we don't want to draw near to God because he might point some things out that are going to have to, we're going to have to change in our lives. And then we have a decision. If we reject it, just like the rich man, I do all these commandments. He says, yeah, but you have one thing. You know, sell all you have. You're rich. Give it to the poor and then follow me. He couldn't do it. And we rip on that guy. But guess how many people could do it? What if, he, what if he came right to your face and said, sell everything you have, follow me? Could you do it? Lament. 
mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yah, and he will lift you up. Do not speak evil against one another, brethren. The one who speaks evil against his brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the Torah and judges the Torah. The Torah is the judge, not us. We're the witnesses. Okay? If we are shining the light of Messiah, it's going to align with the, the law, will bear fruits that align with the law. That's why it says there's no law against the, the fruit of the Spirit because it aligns with the Torah. But if you judge the Torah, you are not a doer of the Torah, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge and the one who is able to save and destroy. But who are you who judges your neighbor? Now, that's Leviticus 19 again. Um, there's a fine line between being a judge and a witness, but also exhibiting righteous judgment to your brothers and sisters, right? Um, I try to, do, to let the word speak for itself. And that's where I believe wholeheartedly the conviction in your heart should come from is hearing the words of God, reading them for yourself, right? And then letting it break down. Lament, weep, mourn, you know, um, my heart, hard-heartedness, people, you know, people are hard-hearted, right? Or getting cold in these days. Messiah warned against that, Matthew 24. Don't let your heart grow cold. You know, the, the heart of people will wax cold because of anomia, lawlessness, right? So, you know, trying to remain humble and brokenhearted before Yah, that's what he will not reject. He won't reject a chastened and broken heart. Psalm 51, he says that as well. Now, the end of James chapter 4 is what I was going to read, but I felt necessary to read that whole you know, first half of it. Oh. Come now, verse 13, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such town and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. What is your life? What is your life? I think Abe made a song like that. What is your life? For you are but a vapor that appears, appears for a little while, but then vanishes. We, we give ourselves too much credit for what we do or who we are. We do. We're so important. But the Bible says you're here today, gone tomorrow, like a vapor. Right? Yeah, in some ways... That's one of the that's one of the things that I think has always been hard for me to to, to cross reference, right? Is that we're like a, a dust dust in the wind or whatever, right? We're a vapor. Yet for some reason, the Creator who made us values us so much, right? He gives us so much value that He would lay down the life of His own Son, and His Son would do it to save us, save our souls. Because even one, He says, is worth leaving the ninety nine for. I can't reconcile that still. But by faith, I believe that I'm one of those nine, nine, the one that left the, the sheepfold that he came and got. Okay. And he's going to break us. And he's going to speak to us. And we're going to listen to his voice. Okay. But instead, you ought, to, you ought to say, if the Lord wills it, again, God's will, we will live and also do this or that. But now your boast is in arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, whoever knows the right thing to do and does not do it, for him, it is a sin. So I'm not judging my brothers in Torah. All right, I have to judge myself in Torah, but if I'm not walking in it, then it doesn't matter, right? If I preach it, if you hear it and you're like, that's true, but you don't do it, then it doesn't matter. But your conscience, you know, now that you've heard the word of Yah, now that you understand it, you are responsible for it. If you sin, it's by your own fleshly passions and desires. That's why we're supposed to put him to death. Okay, now James 5 goes into the the fact that the wealthy people of this world, which uh, obviously America, we think we're rich, but we're poor, naked, pitiable, broken, all those things, right? Um, he's calling us to back to, to holiness, okay? Um, he's calling us back to his his word, his um, his way. Uh, a couple other things I was going to add to, but sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm trying to, um, you know, speak what I've heard. I took a couple notes here, so. Okay. So John 5. Yeah, I don't know if... Uh, what was that first, John? Bear with me, guys. Sorry. Okay. 
Oh, okay, yeah, First John 5. Okay, First John 5, everyone who believes that Yahushua, Jesus, is, is the Messiah, is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves the one born to him. It says, we know that we love God's children by this. If we love God, we obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. And the victory that has overcome the world is this, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world, if not the one who believes that Yahushua, Jesus, Yeshua, is the Son of God? It says, Messiah Yeshua is the one who came by blood and water, not only by blood and water, but water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is truth. For there we testify, that there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. For these three are one. If we accept men's testimony, God's testimony is greater. For this is the testimony that God has given about his Son. The one who trusts, excuse me, in the Son of God has a testimony in himself. And the one who does not trust God has made him a liar because he does not believe in the testimony that God has given about his Son. And his testimony is this, that God gave us eternal life. And his son is, and and this life is in the son. The one who has, uh, the son has life. The one who does not have the son of, of God does not have life. So don't deny the Messiah, you Torah keeper people. Please understand this: the Torah didn't save you. It just shows you where your where your sin is. The son of God laid down his life. He shed his blood. What came out of this side? Blood and water. The Spirit testifies right to these things. So. There's a lot of depth to these these sort of things. I'm not going into that because I don't think it's profitable at this point. Listen to what he says there, here in verse 13, 14. I wrote these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of, of, of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, this is the confidence we have before him, that if we ask anything that accords with his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request we have asked from him. If anyone sees his brother committing sin, not leading to death, he should ask, and God will give life to those who commit sins, not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I'm not saying you should ask about that. All unrighteousness is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. Okay, that's huge too. First of all, when we pray, we ask with the wrong motives, but if we pray with the right motives, his will be done, then he'll answer our prayer, okay? And he's talking about brotherly love here too. If a brother's committing a sin, but it's not a sin that leads to death. You're like, well, what sin? What do you mean? All sin is sin. It's the same. It's not all sin is the same. Okay, not all sin is the same. There's greatest and least in the kingdom, and there's weightier matters of the law, right? Not every sin leads to death. If, it, if every sin led to death, every little sin, every single sin led to death, no one would be alive. We'd all be dead, period. And I'm not saying you should commit sin, okay? I'm saying that if someone's committing a sin, ask him. You know, inquire. Let the spirit do the, the, the drawing, right? But listen to this. I think this tells us what the, the sin that leads to death is. We know that anyone born of God does not keep on sinning. Rather, the one born of God keeps him safe and the evil one cannot touch him. Protection, right? We talk about election, right? We talk about election, selection, correction, deflection. How about God's protection? Evil one can't touch you. If you're an in sin, the evil one can touch you because you're making yourself available to him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Ben Elohim, the son of God, has come to give us insight so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, the son, Messiah Yeshua. This one is the true God, eternal life. Last verse, 1 John 5. Children, guard yourselves from idols. Sin leads to death. I think it's idolatry. You may differ. Um, but the root of our sin is our pride. If we can't humble ourselves before the living God and, and yield ourselves or submit ourselves to him fully, right? Not just this part of my life, that part of my life. Fully submission to him. Then we're going we're gonna to have to suffer the consequences of sin. What is the final conclusion? I think King Solomon... You know, he, he said it best. And I think his uh, Messiah, Yusha, Jesus said it probably even better uh, than I can ever say it. Uh, but it was it Ecclesiastes, the final conclusion, right? Okay, it says, uh, 
I'll, I'll read it. I was just trying to figure it out. I know there's two verses in, in Ecclesiastes, but I'll read three. Be warned. Okay, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 12, 13, and 14. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. There's no, ex- there's no end to making many books. In the excessive study, where is the flesh? Everyone wants to know what book to read, what book to read this book, okay? It, it makes you weary. The flesh makes you weary when you excessively study other books. Listen to this. The final word that we've been heard, that we've heard, fear God, keep his commandments. For this is for all mankind. God will bring into every deed into judgment, including everything that is hidden, whether it is good or evil. Um, in Luke 12, 4 and 5, Messiah says this. It says in Matthew 12, 36 as well. It says, this is the one to fear. Don't fear the one who can kill your body and throw your soul and do nothing with your soul, but fear the one who can kill your body and throw your soul into hell. This is the one whom you should fear. So fearing God is absolutely essential and you can't properly fear God unless you're submitted to him. You can't fear him unless you're submitted to him. And once you're submitted to him, then you can demonstrate your love because of your humility towards him by honoring him and doing what his will is. So don't fear what's coming into this earth, right? Is this the calamity of all calamities that's coming? Maybe. But if you're preparing your heart today to be with him for eternal life, then you will understand what the Messiah said. My kingdom is not of this world. Guys, our kingdom is not of this world. We have to be broken in this flesh so that we can receive the the true salvation so that we can actually be with him um, someday. And he knows if we're sincere or not. God bless you guys. I hope you have a great day. In the mighty name of Yahushua, Jesus the Messiah. Amen.